So, hello everyone, I think we can start. Uh, my name is Daniel, and today I will be presenting a talk about just a few simple UI materials that you can incorporate into your game uh, to improve a performance. So, who are we? We are Virtuous Games. Uh, we are all over the world, we help build games for other companies. We do visual stuff as well for um, Hollywood studios. We worked for over 1,500 titles. Uh, we are in the industry for 20 years now. <clears throat> and we have 22 locations across the world. So I think we are pretty good at handling game development. So what are we going to talk about today? And more importantly, who is this uh, talk for? Um, if you're an aspiring UI uh, programmer or tech artist, or if you're uh, a gameplay programmer who's unlucky enough to draw the shortest straw and be assigned to any UI work, then this is probably for you. If you haven't worked with any materials, uh, this is a good place to start. We're going to talk about some traditional UI layouting in the UMG and some of the disadvantages. Then we're going to compare it to the material use. Uh, we're going to see what functionality from the materials we can use to replace the traditional methods. Uh, I have some demo for you for today. And then in that demo, we're going to look at some performance metrics so you can see how much performance you can actually save. And in the end, we'll have uh, space for questions and answers. So traditionally, uh, when you are working with UI layout, you use panels and render transforms. So panels, you basically uh, tell, you, tell your widgets how to organize and the render transform can scale, translate, or uh, rotate your UI. They have few disadvantages. If you're using panels, some of them will increase your batches because they first need to render uh, the first child and the second child. So for example, canvas panels and overlay panels, all of them basically uh, give every children a new render ID. Um, when you're using render transform, uh, you will trigger layout pass and layout invalidation, so that's a bit of overhead on your CPU. And of course, it's just an extra widget, which means it's going to instantiate, it's going to initialize, and that's another overhead for your CPU. So when we compare it to the materials, most people think that when you use materials, you just use them for fancy effects, which is mostly true. You can make beautiful VFX in UI through the materials. But I would argue that it's good, uh, it's a good practice to use even simple material functions for simple layouting because it gives you a performance boost. Uh, materials, all the calculations run on GPU, so you'll have a highly parallel workload. Uh, usually in one material you combine uh, one, or more, one or more visuals, so you'll reduce the number of your batches. When you animate the materials, it doesn't usually, it should not trigger any layout invalidation, so you'll get rid of that CPU overhead as well. So. You, I, in the end, you'll reduce a lot of CPU time and a, lot of, a bit more memory. But why? Why do we want to go out of our way to um, make it extra work to tink tinker with the materials uh, when we can just do a simple layout and, and anyone says, like, oh, yeah, that's good enough? Well, the, the reason is simple. We don't want to end up with anything like this, where you will have a very nice looking UI in the front, but it is held on by just your prayers and usually a sea of canvases, widgets, and 
the usages of transforms. So when you try to interact with it, you know something's off. Usually there's no magic way to improve, increase UI performance. Uh, this is something that happens a lot on projects. You uh, will see production or, or devs thinking that, oh, we'll just do the first pass and then we'll just go back and um, just adjust it a little bit and uh, we'll fix everything. And it usually ends up with you just reworking the whole thing and putting twice as much time in it. Um, when someone tells you, oh, just don't bother because it, uh, the performance is, the gain is negligible, it might be true for just one instance, but when you do it continuously over the project, you have a measurable performance impact. So I urge everyone to just try to think about how to approach the layouts and the materials just from the start. Even, even though if you might rework it a bit later, it's always good to start optimizing early. And another thing is people usually are afraid of materials or they just don't understand them. If you don't have a material specialist like we do, sitting right there, hi Andres. Um, so it's just for the comfort for the people, they usually tend to avoid it. But when you start working with it, you'll gain even more vertical integration where a programmer can set up something simple and then material artists can take it over from there, but they can uh, connect all the pieces together in the code. So you will have better preparation for the future. And you'll save time in the long run because you, you'll have a bit more overhead on the, um, on the time where you actually develop the feature, but you'll save a lot on polishing or bug fixing. And I hope no one from production hears this because they will get a heart attack. So some of the material functionality that we can basically use to replace the UMG layout, they consist of, of course, transforms, because you can transform anything in the material. Uh, using linear interpolation, you can get rid of overlays, grids, or panels. You can create a highly sophisticated atlas for UI in the materials. I have just a simple one to show you, but it's something that's a, an option for you. And of course, a masking is something that you cannot do without a material. So I will be showing you this little cute demo that we've cooked up before we came here. Uh, it's just a, a simple representation on what, what you can expect from HUD or, or a minimap. And we will see how traditional layout looks like and how the material version changes things for you. So I'll pull up the demo for you. So it's, it's really a simple demo where one part is done by the traditional layouting. Everything is animated. Uh, I'm using sequencer, so I will not be using animation curves, but it's something that you can incorporate, of course, as well. And by just looking at it, you don't see any difference. Now it's the material one, so it's one-to-one, -one, nothing really changes. But let's, let's take a look at some specific widgets. So for example, we have the map point, which is a traditional layout. It consists of, of an overlay panel and basically two overlaid images, which is fine. But that means we have four widgets here, and we have an overlay panel that basically creates two batches for us. So we have a material here. This is the material instance of the uh, map point, where you have uh, the components for the first part, for the first image, the second image, and some global components. So you can rotate separately either of those images, or you can rotate the whole thing. Um, you can scale it, transform it however you want. So it 
doesn't have to be specific material for like the spe specific image. Uh, you can combine everything. So this this means that this material instance give us uh, a really good tool to actually create multiple instances and multiple visuals. How does a material like that looks like? It's pretty simple. You have two textures here. Um, you'll just linear, linearly interpolate between the two. I have a, a coloring scheme as well, if you need coloring. And then you'll just combine the alpha, and that's basically it. Uh, and in order for us to actually use the transforms, I've created a transform function that will just feed into both of the textures. And uh, here are the parameters that you can adjust outside. So it's really a simple material, but you can use it basically anywhere. If you have a button with a background and a, an icon, you'll just use a material instance of this material. So the material function is actually something that's interesting because I didn't actually create it um, all by myself. There was one prerequisite for this. Uh, I am using UI Material Lab uh, from Epic. It's a project that you can find on Marketplace, and they have a set. Up, they've set up a lot of functionality for you that you can use. They have a great video on YouTube. So if you Google, uh, sorry, if you put a um, UI Material Lab inside of the YouTube search bar, um, it's around two hour long. But I would urge you to watch it since they are talking about a lot of uh, math stuff and, and visuals. So I just grabbed some of the functions there and I just chained them. So we are inputting UVs. They are going through scale. Then they go through translate. Then they have some custom rotator. And I finish it with the SDF box. And the reason for that is that I want to create a mask when when the um, the texture or, or your image is uh, translated, uh, you want to mask it because otherwise you can have bleeding. So it's actually really not that hard or or any uh, anything complex. It's really simple, but it gives you a nice nice base start basically for whatever you need. Let's take a look at some other materials. Yeah, so then we have basically the same principle, but with more images. So this is a loadout menu, uh, loadout hut icon, and it consists of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight images. So I do it all over again, transforms into a background and an icon. I multiply the mask. And I do it for every single image. And I'll just combine it. I use the reroute, name the reroute node, and I just combine it in the end. So it's pretty much basically the same thing all over and over again. But it, it gives you basically any visual um, combination in the end that you want. Um, we have a mask, it's a compass mask. So this is an interesting one. Usually when you are doing something like a compass, the first thing you need to do is you, you mask it and it basically runs from left to right and it repeats. So when you're using uh, traditional layouts, you are basically, you have to have two sets of the widgets. So when you are at the edge, when you, it needs to repeat, uh, then the visual continues. So this is something that you can avoid with the material use. And I forgot where it was. Yeah. So in the material one, I just have one set of the points in, on the compass. 
Uh, and I use Retainer Box, which gives me the ability to create a mask with background, and then I can just use the transform function where I turn on repeat. So when I translate it, it doesn't matter how far it goes, it will always repeat. So you will save on the widgets there as well. You can replace functional widgets as well. This is something that uh, I cooked up for the progress bar because progress bar is usually just a mask. So you'll have your fill, your background, and again, you'll just translate over and combine the images. We have a custom retainer box that we did. I can show you inside of the, yeah, here. So we have a custom retainer box, which basically uh, allows us to use the sequencer to animate the retainer material. So we've just added a brush that automatically syncs with the effect material. So you can actually push uh, the brush from the retainer box and create an animation for it. So yeah, most of the most of the stuff is basically just translating and overlaying different images. I told you it was going to be pretty simple. And then we have the notification widget, which basically this uses the same retainer box uh, and transforms it through the material. So we don't have to worry about any layout invalidation for you. But an interesting thing is when you actually look at the results of what this accomplishes. So we just used a few simple materials. We used a lot of material instances to create different visuals. And if you look at the performance from the standpoint of a standalone uh, widget, then yeah, of course, you're not going to measure any noticeable difference. But then you measure the whole thing con as you continuously applied all of these simple principles in the materials and you will find very interesting results. So we have some render times here. Uh, we did 10 runs on each, so for the UMG layout and the materials. And we used Unreal Insights to measure it. So as you can see, there's about a third of performance boost from the UMG layout to the material layout. And as you can see, there's a, a drop from 3.3 milliseconds on initialization to just two. And depending on your project uh, or your platform that you're going to create the project for, this can mean a difference between a stutter when you're opening a menu or a smooth gameplay. Then we have some stats from the uh, slate. So there's a noticeable reduction in batches, almost half. We reduced number of widgets from 146 to 86. But the biggest dip is in the vertices. And that's from 1,500 to 332. 
So we have about 38% reduction in initialization time, 34% reduction in the idle draw time, and then 47% reduction in batches, 41% reduction in widgets, and staggering 77% reduction in vertices. And there's nothing really much more to it. It's, um, you usually use the layouts and the panels to create specific visuals, and you can all do that in Material through very simple means. So where's the what's the bottom line for this? I think the bottom line is you should look at the performance from the start. You should try to create layouts with the performance in the mind because the performance gain is always additive. So you will not see much of a difference in a single menu that you're going to create but you will see it as the end result of the game. And the creating simple layouts through materials, I think, is a great start for anyone who wants to, who, did, who didn't think about materials before or who's afraid of them. And I think I actually finished. Okay, thank you.